In this video, we're going to prove some logical equivalent statements slash sentences. And so right here, we have our logical equivalence chart. And so I hope you can follow along. And so like I said, here's the chart if you want to reference it. And so here's our next problem right here. First problem, I should say. It says P and negation Q or P and Q is logically equivalent to P and negation Q or Q. And so what happened that made our statement change? So let's take a look at our laws. And so when you have a problem like this, you have to look at all your laws. And if for the most part you would have your laws memorized by proving them. And so we prove all these and so let's take a look here. We're going to be using the distributed law. And we're going to be using the distributed law but backwards, if you can see it. And we're going to be using that for the end statement. It's right here. And why is it an end statement? Because it goes P and. So we're using this part. So we have P and, so if you remember that, it's P and, and then you simply move these with the OR statement. So we move all this with the OR statement, and then you put it in parentheses as following. And so we did number three, which is going to be our distributed law. Four ends, right? And so I'm not going to write it all out, but you can see what the process is. All right, so now our next statement says P N negation Q or negation Q. And so what happened? Well, we're going to use the commutative law, and you remember the commutative law? It just simply means we're flipping it. And so don't get confused with our arbitrary variable statements. These could say A to Z, no matter, it could say whatever it wants to say. It simply means the same thing, right? It could say A or B, etc., right? And so in this case, it says Q or negation Q is logically equivalent to the negation Q or negation our Q, I mean. And so everything has a commutative law when it has the connectors of OR and N. If it has OR and N, it has a commutative property to it. So I want to keep that in mind. And so what do we use? We use number one, commutative property for the OR. Alright, so our next problem says P, or I mean our next logical equivalency says P and T as following. And so what do we do? What happened here? Well, we're going to use the negation law. See that? That's our negation law. And we're going to use the negation law for the OR. And so that gives us what does it give us? And so that gives us right here number five negation law for the or. And so I want you to take notice of something that we could have done, we could have skipped this step and went straight to that step but with these kind of problems the proof is already written out for you as shown right here and so all you have to do is simply identify what law you have to use in the case that none of these are given to you then you have to identify what law to use yourself and so later on we're going to do some proofs like that 
But first let's go on to our problem. Right here it says P and T. And so what law are we using? We're going to be using the identity law. So that's going to be number four. It's going to be the identity law. So what's the last thing we need to do? We need to conclude our statement, right? So right here it's going to say, therefore. And so that's the proper way of saying our um, conclusion. Most of the time I say thus. You can use any word that um, is suitable for concluding your statement slash sentence, right? This is a whole entire statement and sentence, so we're going to use these three symbols and in this case this is already written out for us but just know that in the future we'll be using these symbols and it means therefore formally and it could mean thus or any concluding transition word. And so right here we're going to have P and negation Q or P and Q is logically equivalent to P because that's what we just proved and so that's what we proved, right? Prove that. Maybe our last problem for today. It's gonna we're gonna be using the same truth table. We're gonna be using the same logical equivalence laws. And so let's go over right here. So it says P or negation Q and negation P or negation Q. And so this is what we're beginning with. And we're gonna simplify it. And so right here we have negation Q or negation or neg negation Q or P and negation Q or negation P. And so what law do we use to change what happened? And so right here, I don't know if you could tell, but we flip these and that's called commutative, right? And you can see right here, this is negation Q and this is negation Q. So by a commutative law. And that's number one. Alright, so now let's take a look right here. What happened in this law? Well, that looks familiar to our distributed law, right? And by the way, what which part of the commutative law was this one? This was the OR for commutative law. And what part of the distributed law did we do here? It's going to be the OR. And how can you tell which one's which, right? You got to look in front. So that's our OR. See, there's an OR right there. So I'll put this in orange so you can see it. That's the OR. So it always follows what, what's in front of it. So this is an OR, as you can see right here. And this is an OR. And this is going to be OR too, so. We did a commutative law by the OR. We did a distributed law for the OR. And so right here, in the following logical equivalent statement, it says negation Q or C. And so what happened was P and negation P. And so what law is that? Well, that's going to be our negation law, which is going to be number 5. And the following one would three and this was one remember so three and one so this is negation for or and then finally what happened here we did the identity and this was for the or too and I made a, a little mistake right here this was for the end And why was this one for the end? Because of this, right? If it was negation for the or, this would give us a totality. And so, I made a mistake by accident, but it was good to show you why it's really important to put this. And so, we have a negation for the end, right? And that gives us a contradiction. 
what would happen if we had the negation for an OR? As you can see right here on their chart, it gives us a totality. And so it gives us two completely different logical equivalent statements. And so it's really important to to put the right um, and or or for our following logical equivalencies. And so now we had to finally conclude our sentence and compound statements together. And so we say therefore, which is this, right? Or thus, or any following um, logical equivalent definitions such words and so right here we're going to have p or negation q and, and so we're going to rewrite what is up here and what we um, just proved this is what we proved negation p or negation q is going to be logically equivalent to negation q and that's going to be your answer. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. It helped my channel grow and I would appreciate it a lot. Thank you everybody. And if you have any comments, please leave it down below. And I can't wait to see you, you next time. Bye everybody.